It just go along at 30 miles an hour and shove a tree branch into your front wheel and then go head first. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how he didn't knock out all his teeth, how he didn't collapse a sinus cavity, how he didn't break his neck, how he doesn't have permanent dent. I don't understand. And he was racing five days later. Probably one of the craziest experiences that I have had on a bike <laughs> was just before I stopped racing and just at the start of when this team started to become the team it was. We were heading into the San Rafael Twilight, which is a huge USA Crits Twilight event. Super fast, split level course. It's got a, it's got like a little tabletop to it. So you kind of come ripping down quite literally in the high 40s. Some people hit 50 miles an hour on this straightaway. And you come up this little ramp and then it gets really, really tight at the top. And then it strings back out all the way into this turn. It's a super wide turn that slingshots you down. We call these slingshot courses because they aren't, they're just enough to force you to go hard enough and then slingshot you around. So it keeps the speed super fast. San Rafael is a classic American crit. Um, we ultimately knew that Cliff Bar was gonna kind of line up this race late. They were the only really organized team. We wanted to hop on their wheel and then try to come around them on the last lap. And we had four of us versus six of them. It's kind of considered their home race, big deal. <laughs> Nothing worked the way it should. Uh, during that race, um, we were trying to cover off on, on a particular amount of moves and be represented. About halfway through the race, this crazy thing happens. It gets really dark on the back side of the course. And the course had this new adjustment where a fence got moved out while they're repairing a curve. And we didn't notice it when we pre-rode the course, but there's all these sandbags along uh, the fence, keeping the fence propped upright. When the course got dark, you stopped kind of, you started to ignore that fence and not see it. And so you started to ride closer and closer and closer and closer to this thing because the race is going faster and faster as it goes later and later into the race. And we had this crazy thing where the race was now like zipping along the inside of this fence along the backhand side. I had this moment where I was uh, starting to shuffle it was over halfway up and I was starting to shuffle up to the front of the race so I could start to work with and for Spencer. And I remember being out on the outside of the field, it was about 10 riders wide and uh, it was just anticipating the race kind of collapse, collapsing back in and I was just gonna shuffle around the outside and park at the front for the rest of the race. At the same time that I was moving up around the outside side and Adam Sheps was coming with me, um, I like look over to see where my teammates are and I see I see this explosion of humanity on the right hand side and I hear like a I hear this huge metal reverberation and I see a back end of a bike wheel go up into the air and kind of like flip along the outside right hand side of the bike race and then all these human beings swarming towards me on the outside. And I'm like, have to like sprint to move around the swarm and then reconnect at the front of the race and like slide back in. And I'm like, what the f just happened? And I was like, clearly someone just ate massive amounts of shit and like ran into the fence. And so I was like, oh, f and I was like, okay, bike race. So like in 30 seconds here, like it's over. It's like, whatever, it doesn't matter, like onward. So I was sitting there riding and then Adam Sheps kind of uh, comes up to me and he's like, that was Spencer. <laughs> and I was like, holy crap, like Spence ate it. And then I was like, he's dead. He's clearly dead, like he's going to be dead. So then we come back around, we come back around and he's on the ground, not moving. And the bike race goes to the left-hand side and I look over and I see Spence just like, ah, doing like, the, like a back nap right on the course and like nobody around him. And I was like, and I was like, there's nothing to be done. Other human beings have to do this thing. So Adam and I were like, well, we just like same game plan. We don't know where anybody else is. We don't have any other teammates. And I was like, it's just gonna be you and me, homie. And we're gonna do this thing. As far as I remember, this is like two, two years ago now. So we might've had some other people in the race but just Sheps and I. So Sheps and I just try to like keep riding the front as long as humanly possible is just kind of float that pocket between 20 and 10 as you know, and you basically play the musical chairs game where you kind of push through the pocket over and over and over. We come back through and I kind of notice that Spencer's there's people there. 
Then I'm racing, racing, racing. And then all of a sudden we notice that Spencer isn't longer there. And it's like, okay, I guess he got medical help. Um, and then we just keep racing. All of a sudden, I kind of got shuffled into like the middle of the race again by this, for whatever reason. I remember I was kind of like in 25th or 30th position, which is not the right spot to be in. And I was like, okay, I got to start coming back up to the front and reconnect with Adam up there. And like, I need to stay forward from now on. And then I see a kit up in front of me and I'm like, that is not Adam Sheps. And it's Spencer. And so Spencer has his hands on the hoods and he's just like pedaling, just like at like 25th wheel. And he's kind of like shuffling back. And I was like, and he's going backwards. And I was like, I came up and I was like, Spence, are you all right? No response. And then we're like through the turn. And then you kind of have to like pay attention to yourself and like, you know, handle your own bike. And then like, I kind of saw him again and it was like another two people between us. And I'm like, Spencer, like, what the f what do you like are you, like and he's like oh yeah i'm i'm like i'm a, i'm okay-ish okay-ish <laughs> you know and i'm like i can tell he's not really like holding the bars very well and his like face is kind of puffy and he's like not answering in full sentences and he's like super motivated to like keep his u23 jersey and i'm like what i don't know what's going on and then like he started to like go backwards right and then and then he would come up and then he would go back and then he would come up. And then like, so I was like, I rode over to him. We're doing a billion miles an hour now. We're doing a billion miles an hour. It's starting to get into the last third of the race. You need to do the things at this point or else the race is gonna leave you behind. He's like, kind of goes up, up that little ridge, but he kind of like turns late. He's just not on point. And like, people are kind of going around him a little bit. And I was like, I rode up next to him and he didn't respond to me. And I was like, Spence, like, I don't think you should be racing. So like, then I kind of like push him up this, this ridge and I'm like, Spence, okay, like we need to not do this. Like, and then came around again and like same type of thing. Like he wasn't fully coherent. And I like, I kind of like gave him another shuff, sh push towards the front of the race and then another one. And then we came around another lap and I kind of like gave him another push up the ridge. And I was like, this doesn't seem to make much sense to me, but I got to go and like, okay, homie, like, like you gotta do your thing, like be safe because you've already thrown smart out the window, <laughs> you know? So it's like, so, so like, okay, great. So then we were on a racing. So then I like, at this point, like Adam and I are trying to like connect and get forward as forward as we can. We're a little late to the game. You kind of already have to be there. So I'm kind of stuck in that crummy universe of like 15th wheel, which is just trash. It's like the trashest, trashy spot to be in. Cause you're just waiting for gaps to open in some ways, and then you gotta floor it to get through this thing. So it's the it's the it's probably one of the most dangerous pockets in all of crit racing is between 15 and 20 because you're not actually in it. You're gonna get left behind once the lead outs kick off. You can't really do shit, and then you got people packed behind you, and then you're just like waiting for opportunity, and you're kind of, you're just not in control of your own race. After the race, we were like, I was like, well, most of us survived. And I was like, I'm sorry guys, I blew it. I just got into the bad spot and I was too paying attention to Spencer and I should have been further forward. Sheps and I finished mediocre. I finished really mediocre. Spencer actually had the best finish on the team for the day, completely delirious. Then he's like, oh, we have podium. I had to like clean him off. So like we're cleaning blood off of his face and body to like get him to podium. And he's just now being like, okay, yeah, I can do this. Like I can get onto the podium and like wobbles his way up and gets on podium with like that stuff. Then afterwards we get him off podium and now his body's like, oh, I'm through combat. Now I can tell you how fucked up you really are. All of a sudden he was like, I need to sit down, sits down. Can't hold his burrito. So we bring him, so we have to like walk him to dinner sit him down at dinner, cut his burrito and feed him food. Can't use his hand anymore, can't operate. Next day, goes to the hospital, x-rays came back, cracked femur, chipped bone, concussion. And we raced in five days. He goes into the next race, into, into Littleton, literally crack and on a broken leg, broken leg, and he had a full concussion, couldn't really ride that week. And then finished out the rest of the year like that. And then it got worse for us from there. We got more injuries after that. That was one of the weirdest, that was one of the craziest performances I had seen in quite some time.